Can you hear me now? Yes. I can hear you, Judge. Great. Okay. Everybody is here with audio, and we are on the record and ready to okay. begin. Okay. Unfortunately, everybody, this was the first one, so we had some glitches getting on. Um, okay. Uh, this is the matter of Axiom Worldwide versus Merwick, docket number L. 2367-19, Council for Plaintiff, please enter your appearance. Andrew Shagonis of the South Duty Law Group on behalf of the Plaintiff Axiom Worldwide, LLC. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Council for Defendant. Good morning, Your Honor. Jacqueline Voronov, Hall Booth Smith on behalf of Defendants, Merwick Care and Rehabilitation Center, and Andrew Massetti. Okay. All right. Um, okay, Mr. Shagonis, this is your motion. Um, you can summarize it, please. Absolutely, Your Honor. Your Honor, we're, we're asking for an order to vacate the motion, the order for sanctions against plaintiff, um, and to also reconsider the uh, motion for summary judgment, particularly with respect to the business entity, Merwin Care. Um, with respect to the motion for sanctions, um, I don't believe it's an appropriate basis to sanction a party for filing a motion for summary judgment and also being diligent in pursuing their discovery. Um, I don't believe that it's it's there's anything in the rules that says you can't pursue discovery and also pursue a motion for summary judgment at the same time. Um, so I don't believe that's an appropriate basis for sanctions. Secondly, with respect to the claim against Mr. Massetti, which was raised, I do believe and there's case law on this that says a corporate officer has a fiduciary duty to its creditors. And um, additionally, if you look at the Bellotti case, the uh, making a claim against a corporate officer is appropriate, but it's also said in the Bellotti case that nearly all or all the evidence against that corporate officer would lie with the defendant, with the defendant in the matter. And in this case, the court sanctioned us for filing a motion for summary judgment while not allowing discovery to be made in favor of the defendant. But we were sanctioned before we were given the opportunity to discover any information against Mr. Massetti. So I don't think that's equitable in, in, when you look at them side by side. I think that we should be entitled to, to some discovery against Mr. Mistetti. Um, and then also, the, the, the defendant made their motion for sanctions under Rule 148 against the, uh, the attorneys, but the court um, awarded sanctions against the plaintiff. And I, I don't think that's appropriate, really, in this matter, that, that there should be sanctions awarded against the appropriate. So I think that's an additional basis for vacating the order for sanctions. With respect to the motion for summary judgment, the, the court didn't really consider the liability of the corporate entity. And in doing so, we have put forth a substantial volume of invoices that really detail what's, what's at issue here. And I mean, I, I can cut to the chase. We're talking about a pretty straightforward collections matter where staffing services were provided to a company. There were diligent efforts to recover those staffing service fees for those staffing services outside of discovery. In doing so, Mr. Massetti made a comment, we will make sure that you are paid, hence the claim against Mr. Massetti. And they haven't been paid. They have not been paid. So the, the, I don't. when we filed our motion for summary judgment, the liability, even if the court has some pushback on the claim against Mr. Massetti, which we should be entitled to vet through discovery, there really wasn't any consideration of the claim against the LLC. And in 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 so in that far, we filed this this the, the defendants were served in November. We filed our motion for summary judgment in February. And between the time that we filed our motion for summary and we served them and the time that we filed our motion for summary judgments, many, many months. And they haven't come up with anything to dispute any of our claims. They didn't put a certification of, of anyone from Merwick. They didn't put a citation to any fact to dispute our claims. And that's the standard for summary judgment. We didn't file a motion for summary judgment the second we served them. No, we waited many months. And after we had made repeated requests for discovery, and I'll just I'll further note, as we sit here today, we still have received 
no discovery from the defendants and discovery is set to end next month. So the defendants aren't even doing anything to help themselves in this matter. We did receive just this week what was purported to be responses to requests for production, which would have been two months late as, as we received them today, but there were no documents attached. It was just a bunch of objections and saying, we'll give you the relevant documents later. So, I mean, the defendants aren't even helping themselves in this matter. We're going to get to a point where we have no discovery in this matter, and yet the plaintiff has been sanctioned. It's just completely inequitable, Your Honor. All right. Um, Ms. Varanov? Thank you, Your Honor. So I, I need to clarify one point just out the gate. And that is with respect to the time period between when summary judgment uh, motion was filed and when discovery was served, because um, the, uh, the assertion that there were many months, quote unquote, is, is just blatantly false because the summary judgment motion, uh, or I'm sorry, the, in, the discovery was served on January 21. And the summary judgment motion was then filed 20 days later on February 10th. Um, on February 11th, only 20 days had passed. And at that point, we had to oppose the motion for summary judgment. Um, now, taking this back, the standard for motions for reconsideration are very clear. Um, the, they only fought, the reconsideration is only appropriate for those cases that fall into a corridor where either the court made a decision that was based on palpably incorrect or an irrational basis, or the court did not consider or failed to appreciate probative evidence. And that didn't happen here. Uh, Your Honor, com fully considered Mr. Shigunis's arguments at length at the time of our March 13th oral argument, um, and the court correctly found that summary judgment was not appropriate. It's disingenuous to assert that on the one hand, we need all this discovery, or that he's entitled to further discovery, that he needs to get discovery, while in the same breath arguing that summary judgment is appropriate. Because as, a, as inherent in the summary judgment rules is the idea that at the time that you file that motion, you're already entitled to judgment as a matter of law. There would not be any need for further discovery. It wouldn't make any sense. You can't both say that you want discovery and also want a judgment as a matter of law. They don't align. And secondly, the issue as it pertains to Mr. Massetti, this, even were we to accept this allegation that he told them, oh, you'll get paid, He's the CFO. There's still no basis against him for personal liability. There's no piercing the corporate veil theory that's ever been advanced here. There's no evidence that he had anything to do with the contract at issue. Even the documents that were submitted by Mr. Shagunis, were they even admissible, which they're not, because they've never been authenticated. Uh, the president, Mr. Koppel, didn't submit the requisite certification under any of our court rules that would permit any of these invoices to be admitted into the record. And even if they were, none of them have Mr. Massetti's name on them, nor does the original contract. There's no basis for personal liability. And so the court correctly determined that sanctions for filing a premature motion for summary judgment under these circumstances was completely appropriate. And we would ask that the court include in its <laughs> consideration our fees that were incurred as a result of having to respond to the motion for reconsideration as well. All that's happening right now is a waste of resources and time, especially during a public health crisis, to reconsider a sound decision that was correct the first time. There's been no dilatory tactics or obstructionary tactics to refuse to provide discovery. We were first dealing with a motion for summary judgment. There was no record, not because of any action on the part of the defendants. There was no record because we didn't get to the point of discovery before a summary judgment motion was filed. And we have every intention of complying. And counsel makes it seem as if we didn't hold, we were withholding dozens and dozens and thousands of pages of documents. You served five discovery demands. There were only five requests, two of which were duplicative, which we said we would provide by May 10th which requested copies of all payments, which we have every, ob every intention of doing. But unfortunately, right now, our clients operate a nursing home. They're on the front lines of dealing with a public health crisis, unlike any we've ever seen before. They just can't get around to giving discovery in a debt collection case, which if we could, we could extend discovery, I've asked twice for consent to extend discovery. It's only the first discovery end date. But this isn't a motion for discovery, so I'm loath to, to argue the merits of that. We can argue that with 
respect to Mr. Chagunas's pending motion to strike, which isn't even returnable yet. We haven't addressed that issue. And that's the proper forum to deal with that. This is a motion for summary judgment. Summary judgment was properly denied. There was still genuine issues of material fact, which precluded summary judgment as to both of these parties. And the sanctions were proper given the timing of that motion in the, in the case posture. Can I just respond to some of those? Yes, Thank you, you, Your Honor. Um, so with respect to, to the timing of discovery, one thing that isn't clear, and Ms. Ms. Voronov just correctly stated, this is a straightforward collections action. They were served with this, this complaint in November. If they felt like there was any dispute as to the amount owed, they don't need to wait until, until January to get discovery in order to dispute the amount. They would simply just collect those uh, invoices. And, you know, the, the COVID, as, as serious and grave as this issue is, was not an issue for the duration of the, the discovery period. It only became an issue at the beginning of, of March when the first case was discovered in New Jersey. There were Discovery was served on them well in advance, well in advance of that, and their request for productions came due well in advance of that. And then the second thing is, um, you know, the, the, the idea that, um, that, that, that we aren't entitled to a judgment doesn't consider the fact that the Merwick defendants were, are, there's clear liability. There's just, there's no basis and they haven't disputed it. Um, counsel with respect to Massetti has said, well, Massetti's just an employee. He's not an officer. He, he's not a, an owner. First of all, we brought it against him as an officer because he made the statement, we will be responsible and we will pay for that. And second of all, there's nothing in the record that the court can rely on to even understand his status with the company. They haven't put any any fact in front of the court that says he's an owner or not an owner. There's and nothing. There's the, no the, Ms. Voronov, Ms. Voronov is testifying on behalf of the defendant. So are you, so are you counsel. How? How you am I have, testifying? Uh, you just testified that he made certain comments. That was your testimony. I don't know if it was in any of your certifications or your client certifications. Well, we have an email. I could certainly attach it. I'm happy to follow up and attach it. I mean, listen, at very least, we should be entitled to, to discovery against Mr. Massetti. I don't understand how we get sanctioned if we haven't even been allowed for discovery, yet we get slapped because they, we haven't allowed them discovery. I don't see how those two bases can stand next to each other. If we're giving them every benefit of the doubt to run through the entire discovery period without giving one shred of discovery, without producing a single thing, and we can't even, we can't even, uh, uh, we're going to get sanctioned for not being able to vet a case against a corporate officer. There's no doubt he's a corporate officer. The Bilotti case is very clear that in those types of cases where there's an allegation against a corporate officer, that you have to allow some discovery. Furthermore, in the Zahavian... Wait a minute. Okay, you're, you're starting to repeat yourself, Mr. Shaguna. So... Well, I was just going to say, also in the Zahavian case, it's very clear that when there's a motion for summary judgment, and the summary judgment is... After the motion for summary judgment, the claims are allowed to go to the trial, that you can't award sanctions against an attorney or a party for that because the case is still moving to trial. In other words, there hasn't been an ultimate disposition on the case against Mr. Massetti. There hasn't been a motion to dismiss. There hasn't been a motion for summary judgment. There hasn't been any discovery on the claims. So we don't know the quality of the claims. The court doesn't okay, know. Okay, counsel, let me explain how that, um, <clears throat> let me uh, tell you what my conception of the sanctions were. Maybe it, I didn't make it clear. I don't know. I'm used to, um, and, and frankly, I may have transferred um, the um, understanding that I had from another client of yours that um, the defendants basically agree to counsel fees for collection. And that's not, I'm not sure. Is that, does that apply to this client? Does your client have um, an agreement with Merwick where if there's a collection or a default that um, attorney's fees can be as asserted? Um, I believe so. Let me, you know, I'll tell you exactly right now. Because um, hmm. I made that assumption, but I thought maybe it wasn't clear. 
Your Honor, the answer to that question is yes. Part of their claim was that they're seeking $11,000 as a calculation of the total amount they alleged to be outstanding based on the contract that they had with Merwick. That's correct. Okay. So there is, there is a contractual basis for attorney's fees that you are seeking. Okay. Yes, um, let me ask you this, Mr. Shagunas. Quite frankly, um, do you have, do you really believe that there should have been a summary judgment, um, a grant of summary judgment against Mr. Massetti? Yes, I absolutely do. He, he stepped up and he said, we are going to take care of this. And again, when you go back to the corporate officer, a corporate officer has a fiduciary duty for the claims. We're talking about staffing claims that were ordered by this company, knowing that they couldn't pay for them and they still haven't paid for them. Just the fact that they haven't paid for them is a, is a fact that goes towards it. All right, it's Mr. Still- Shigunis, I get, I get that. So you think, okay, so discovery would not have generated um, uh, generated either more information for you or less information for you regarding uh, Mr. Massetti. Oh, a- absolutely. You're confident that this court, and you're relying on the fact that this court should have granted you a motion um, for summary judgment as to Mr. Massetti. Is that your position? It's my, that is my position. Yes, absolutely. And I don't, and I'm first and second of all, I'll say this, would discovery aid our case? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. But if and you're what, talking, if it, talking, it, what if it precludes, um, what if, what if it precludes that counsel? I, I think there's an issue of fact, at least you're saying that there's no issue of fact as to Mr. Massetti. That there well, would be no issue of fact to present to a fact finder. Listen, I, 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 could you make the argument that there's an issue of fact? Of course you can make the argument that there's, okay, there's an issue so of fact. Okay, so there's no summary judgment if there's an issue of fact. Well, I think you can make, I that, understand I mean, the court's argument. Mr. Shagun is what I, and I'm, I'm sorry for cutting you off, and it's no, no disrespect, problem. but I know, I think it's your firm that has the next motion, so... That's part of the issue. We, you know, we, uh, the way it's set up now, it's, I try to be efficient, but, um, you know, I'm trying to be efficient. It's yes, not, uh, I, it's no disrespect to you, but let me say this. I think there's, there was an issue of fact as to Mr. Massetti. Typically what I have seen in other actions that have been filed I see the signature by the person who you are asserting a claim against. We don't have that with Mr. Massetti. We don't have him being um, signing the contract. We don't have him guaranteeing the contract. And we don't have him signing. I don't think he signed any of the invoices or receipt of them. Um, So all of that is it makes a question of fact as to uh, Mr. Massetti. I think you have to acknowledge that. Um, the, um, uh, the problem I have is this. What, um, it seems that, um, and, and I think, Mr. Shigunis, you have to acknowledge that um, the court will deny a motion for summary judgment to allow discovery to take place. Um, and since you were in the midst of discovery, um, it, it seemed inappropriate to grant it. We have here invoices. Um, now, I think you've kind of answered the question, and maybe Ms. Varanoff, Varanoff can indicate. Um, is there anything in the information you supply the plaintiff indicating that Merwick has, um, Merwick has paid any of these invoices? What, what, what have you found out initially, at least? As an initial matter, when I looked through 
Um, and and I spoke, I had an opportunity to speak with my client and it's been difficult for the past couple of months with everything that's going on. Their understanding is that many of these invoices were either not received ever. Um, Mr. Massetti has never seen them and it could be due to the fact that they were addressed and sent to someone else. Um, other invoices they contend were paid. And when we, the, the notion that we've never disputed that services were received or that's invoices were paid isn't accurate because we denied this in our answer. We've always disputed that the amount being charged is at issue. We are, we've always been amenable to saying, well, look, send us some invoices, let us review them, find out what happened, and we'll get to the bottom of this. And, and they're happy to do that. But we don't know which of these invoices were ever received. And some of them, I've been told, have been paid. And whatever the difference is, we're happy to review and, and go from there. Let Your Honor, say, oh, okay, go ahead, Mr. Just respectfully to that, Your Honor, they've had them for two months and we haven't heard a thing back from them. Again, the idea that, well, we're, we're going to get to it. We're going we're gonna to review this. We're going to get something done for you. Discovery is going to expire it next month and we have nothing. We they have operate nothing nursing homes. They there. operate nursing homes and they've got a crisis right now with people are dying by the handfuls every single day. They just can't. It's an all hands on deck situation round the clock. I cannot ask my clients who are dealing with people that are dying to to address these invoices, unfortunately, and it's Passover right now. Today is Passover and I'm working on Passover. We've all been working remotely. This is a rare situation. It's unprecedented. Everybody has constraints. And in every case that I've had with every attorney on any type of case, there's an understanding that, look, discovery end dates can be extended. It's the first one. And under the March 27th omnibus order, discovery that would have been due between March and April is still extended till the end of April anyway. So we're still within our time period to give you what you need. So let me just speak to that, Your Honor. I, I 100% respect the COVID outbreak and, and the fact that, that they operated a, 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 a rehabilitation center. I understand that. And we've granted them extension of time twice now for for their motion, for our, our own motion to strike. We've granted them six weeks at least on that. However, when we filed the motion for summary judgment, it was February. It was there was no there was no inkling of the COVID outbreak and it hadn't happened and still there wasn't even a, a case in New Jersey when we had when so that was when we filed the motion for summary judgment in early February when we sat here for the first mo argument was mid March and we were sitting next to each other in a courtroom like this and there was again no pandemic at that point and there was no social distance let me just finish four days and, before governor so, all right so, let him finish let him finish I, I understand i'm not trying to be callous or dismissive of anything i fully understand that i just think that we in this matter in this particular matter they were served in november with there's invoices and calculations that were given to them in november it's now april I understand maybe the last month of it, there's been this very unique circumstance, but they they, they want to be forgiven for the entire duration. Okay, I've, I've, I've acquiesced and granted them two separate adjournments of the discovery motion. I can understand that. I just think in light of all of these things to sanction the plaintiff who's been very diligent in seeking discovery and providing discovery and keeping up that would be completely inequitable. That would be my first argument. The second argument would be there has been enough time for the Merrick organization to provide some, some dispute of these invoices and they haven't done it. There was enough time for them to, to provide the dispute before the first hearing where we all sat next to each other in a courtroom and there were no, these concerns were not as big as they are today. So I just think that the, that the Merrick organization on the summary judgment and the sanctions should be vacated. I think there's ground for that. And I, I submit that to the court respectfully. Thank you, Your Honor. Let me say something. I, I am going to take judicial notice of the uh, COVID outbreak. I can say that I think, I'm thinking it was January that the nursing home in Washington, in Seattle, suffered a devastating circumstance where several um, residents died. So I think the alert went out 
to the nursing homes regarding that. There was a general um, uncertainty regarding that. Um, going forward, having a family member um, in a uh, senior citizen center, um, the, the landscape changed daily uh, about what to do about it. Um, as I will, I will say, I'm not sure that um, the doctors and the scientists really know how it spreads. I think they use the, uh, the flu paradigm to determine how it spreads. And we may not know that yet. The science isn't complete. But nonetheless, rehab centers and nursing homes are under a lot of stress at the moment. Um, the, I just read that a, a, this morning's paper that a veteran center in North Jersey has had a phenomenal number of deaths. Um, and they're scrambling to re, um, put people in other places. Um, so I think the focus right now, quite honestly, is um, the health and safety um, of the public. And Merwick apparently is uh, experiencing that now. I think that um, there were, um, so the court um, back in, when I decided this matter, was not satisfied <clears throat> that the um, discovery had been complete, was not satisfied as to the invoices being um, just um, to be accepted without allowing discovery. Um, there is support for the fact when there is a collection case, if there's a dispute as to whether or not they've been paid, um, that um, uh, the courts have allowed or have, have uh, allowed discovery to proceed before the summary judgment motion. The um, court was concerned about um, the court was concerned about the situation where um, the defense counsel, um, first of all, there had been um, a disagreement as to a deposition, I think, because she was out of the country. Um, then these, this motion for summary judgment was filed while she was trying to comply with the discovery issues. And also, um, it, it appears that there was some miscommunication, that there would be no dismissal as to Mr. Massetti if he didn't give them financial information. Um, and that's, I don't know whether uh, plaintiff's counsel was looking for Mr. Massetti's finance, personal financial information, it seemed that there was some confusion about that. In addition, I don't think that um, because that that seemed to be the only real issue. The um, Merwick, I don't think, was disputing the fact that um, they may owe money, but they were simply trying to assess the facts and um, look at the information. Um, in this case, I did not see that defense counsel as being dilatory. It turns out that COVID uh, changed a lot of things. Um, it dropped on all of us suddenly. Um, and it was changing, I know I experienced in the courthouse, the directions as to how we were going to operate changed daily for a couple of weeks. Um, and so 
we were uncertain and not really prepared um, at the time that all of this occurred. Um, so honestly, I have to say that these circumstances um, really have changed the current landscape. Um, now, the in in uh, in New Jersey, we follow the rule that both parties um, are responsible for their own attorney's fees. However, that can be changed contractually. And you answered my question before that contractually, um, the um, contractually the uh, defendant is responsible for um, attorney's fees. And um, so it was considering the fact that the defendant would be responsible for attorney's fees um, of the plaintiff when they were trying to respond to this, um, it seemed to me that, and the intention was, if I didn't make it clear, that the attorney's fees would be offset by the amount of time um, Ms. Voronov had to address um, uh, these issues, uh, but I haven't ruled on the amount. Um, the, um, quite frankly, I think that um, the, um, uh, and I don't know if there's any law in support of that. Um, but the, um, and I have an order, a certain amount of attorney's fees. Now, addressing the reconsideration, um, the, but, you know, I think, uh, Mr. Shagun has had to admit that there is an issue of material fact as to Mr. Massetti. And I think a lot of the um, arguments at the prior um, at the prior motion involved whether or not Mr. Massetti uh, should have been dismissed or not, or should have been there should have been a motion in support of him, uh, a summary judgment against him. And that there they, they were seeking the um, financials for um, Mr. Massetti before they would dismiss it against him. Um, and that's the perspective that I got from that hearing. However, I don't think Merwick is asking for a dismissal. Um, I think that they were genuinely genuinely trying to address um, which invoices had been paid and not paid and determine uh, how much was actually due. And that is not an um, unreasonable, um, that's not unreasonable. This court does not find it unreasonable for a defendant to analyze the debt and um, determine whether or not everything's due and owing. Um, it happens sometimes that the initial analysis by um, the plaintiff's counsel is, um, is really um, amended when there's a discussion and a review of records. Um, both, both Axion is capable, um, Axion is just as capable of making errors as Merwick. Um, it is, um, and quite frankly, it was, 
you know, the summary judgment at that point in time was not, um, was not, should not have been granted. And it, uh, the court still wouldn't grant summary judgment until they've analyzed um, all of the invoices and payments thereof. That being said, unfortunately, Mr. Shagunas, we all ran into this COVID. I think everybody would just love to be out of it. Uh, frankly, I would. I'd rather work in the courthouse than here. Um, and um, unfortunately for Merwick, there, um, I own, uh, if they're a rehab center or a senior center, nursing home, I think um, from what I've read in the paper, and I'll take judicial notice of, Governor Murphy has um, basically uh, determined that all the health, um, all the health facilities should be focused on addressing this uh, pandemic. So there are changes going on now. And I, I'll, I'll make that part of the record. Um, so the, um, I don't know what kind of demand for attorney's fees there will be. Um, the, um, I will uh, consider I will consider the, I will not reconsider my um, prior ruling, but I think I will um, address the actual fees um, at the time of judgment if necessary. Um, so, and it would only be as to, I, I would not say the plaintiff has to pay it, and I'm not even saying the defendant has to pay it. I mean, uh, that the attorney has to pay it. The, I think that um, the attorney's fees that Axion Worldwide um, will request from the defendant, um, there can be a credit against that if, um, if it satisfies um, all the standards. And I, I recall, Mr. Shagunas, that I allowed you to address those fees. Um, and I don't see an application yet for it by um, Ms. Varanoff. And I still will allow you to address those fees. Um, and you can remake those arguments regarding whether or not Mr. Massetti um, was liable whether or not um, there were sufficient proofs um, against Merwick at the summary judgment motion. But um, quite frankly, um, I'll deny your motion for reconsideration. Um, I think I've clarified the intent of my um, ruling. Can I say and, Yes, yes, you may, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just, I, I just wanted the court to consider if we're, and, and I understand everything the court said. I'm not pushing back. I, I wish the court really the best of luck with whatever family member you have in the, in the in the rehab facility. And I understand Jackie's point and COVID. And I think what's going on is the court's granting quite a bit of, of leeway in, in terms of the COVID. And that's appropriate. I understand that that's appropriate. And also the court is granting quite a bit of leeway in terms of the defendant's discovery. And I, I understand why that is. We've actually granted them. I just think there's a disparity of equities. If you were going to say, we're going to give all this leeway to the defendant and their discovery. Yet on the other hand, we're going to sanction the plaintiff who is not late on any discovery, who has been diligent in pursuing discovery, who's followed the letter of the rule, but we're going to sanction the plaintiff. I just don't think... I just can't stomach how the two of those things coexist. All right. That's a good question, Mr. Shagunas. The, the problem, actually, I mean, if I look back when we were originally arguing this, what was the date of that transcript? Um, um, March 13th. 
Yeah. Um, March 13th, was it? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, when back then, <laughs> things were so different. Agreed. And actually, I think it changed within two weeks after that. It really, it really got crazy. I think everybody had more optimism on the 13th. I don't, honestly, um, everybody did. Um, and things changed daily after that. You're right. We were all close in the courtroom. And um, actually, that day I had so many. I don't even think I had lunch that day because um, I went through the lunch hour. Um, so, um yeah, it was so different. But the perspective I had that day was not the COVID so much as the fact that um, there were a lot of demands made on the defense um, without giving them an opportunity to react. I think that if the, the, the defense wrote um, a lengthy brief disputing your summary judgment motion, um, could have spent that time on actually responding to discovery. Um, and I, when I look at how civil cases proceed, um, the defense was not being um, dilatory. Um, you have to remember that the plaintiff, when you file your complaint, you have pretty much all your ducks in order. And I will say that about counsel in this case, um, that normally um, your particular firm knows exactly what your case is about. Um, and so you know everything when you file the complaint and the defendant doesn't. Um, so you shouldn't be penalized for that, but you have to understand that there needs to be a little bit of um, understanding that um, the defense, it's dropped on them suddenly and then they're scrambling to get the information. Um, so, the bad thing is, because, because you're effective and efficient uh, when you file your complaint, um, now it's used a little bit against you because I give the defense time to um, respond. And I get that. I mean, I, you know, just because, you know, you do a good job and uh, they're not ready, um, it seems that you know, then you're penalized. The The only concern I had, Mr. Shagoon, is, was the um, demands made regarding Mr. Massetti. I think when I reread that transcript, that was my first question, was, are you really going after this guy? Um, yeah, to be clear, we didn't ask for any financials from Mr. Massetti. We asked for W-2s and 1099s from Merwick, only Merwick, because these are staffing services that were being provided to them. We okay. wouldn't even ask for Mr. Massetti's financials. Okay, and, and I we're, misunderstood we're pursuing that. him with respect to him being an officer of Merwick. That's not, what yeah. you, that's not correct. That's not correct because you refused to consider. We sent you a 148 letter out the gate. This was... Within the first month of this action, we sent a 148 letter outlining to you, Mr. Massetti has no liability. Your response was, give me depositions and two years worth of financials before we will consider. Right, financials for Merwick. Case. But you're holding him hostage at this, in this case. And then when you're filing this motion for summary judgment, 20 days had passed. 20 days, and at that point, you certified, you signed your name on a, pl right. on a document that said, we are entitled to judgment as a matter of law against Andrew Massetti without right. knowing full well that these were disputed issues, knowing full well that the record was non-existent, knowing full well that discovery was outstanding because you went and subsequently sent letters demanding deposition dates 
You subsequently filed a motion to strike due to discovery. All the discovery related action in this case took place after you had already filed your motion for summary judgment. And those that's are not true at all. Absolutely. That's not true at all. The record. Look at the dates. February. No, January 8th is the first date that we sent you a request for depositions. That's a full month before any, de any decision was summary moved for summary judgment. And then we also filed on January 20th our, our, our discovery. Furthermore, we served your client November, November of 2019 with a very straightforward collection case. All you have to do is look, and do we owe the money or not? You have any so, I mean, this is, Betty, you we have the documents anything. to back it up. You just have his name. You have his name in the complaint. That's you have to not have true. That's and you didn't serve true. those invoices, and you didn't serve those invoices until your summary judgment motion. They were never right two months ago, and your client hasn't responded. Hasn't responded to what we you lost on the, the invoices. Summary. You this, haven't responded to discovery. Those invoices are not admissible. They're not in the record. They're hearsay. They were never certified pursuant to Rule 802. They weren't. There okay, was well, a certification that there, they were. There's discover. Well, listen. If you want to play, if you want to, if you want to sit on stand on technicalities, go right ahead. But you, but the fact remains that we have these invoices. Your clients signed them, and you haven't responded. And we've asked repeatedly, that repeatedly is the for discovery. Of a discovery motion. That is not what is before the court now. Before the court now is the fact that you filed a summary judgment motion. The court right. correctly ruled that there was no basis to grant summary judgment. The there absolutely is a basis to grant summary judgment. You're wrong. You're, you're just, it, that's wrong. There is absolutely a basis to grant summary judgment. Just that. to be clear, I did not ever say that there is a, to agree that there's a, 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 a dispute of material fact against Mr. Massetti. To the contrary, I said, it's absolutely appropriate to file this motion. I said, I understand if that's the court's ruling, I understand and accept it. However, I think that there is a basis to file this based on the fact that Mr. Massetti said, we will continue to be obligated. We I've will continue to be obligated by the, by, for the amounts that are owed. Now, we haven't seen any discovery. We haven't seen the defendant hasn't done one thing in this matter I've to respond to anything in terms of discovery. You have to keep that off the record because I'm sorry, that's never been alleged. It's not even alleged in the complaint. These are grasping at straws techniques that are now being argued. Just like Mr. Shaguna said, you can't testify on behalf of the client. That is what's happening. There's nowhere. There's not one document, not a email, not a comment that says that Mr. Massetti made any promises. If, I'll if produce the I'll produce the email. If you send me some discovery requests, I'll be happy to produce the email. I have it. You I'll send it to the court. I'll follow I'll follow the email today. Your Honor, if you'd like, I'll put the email with a letter that today to the court. That doesn't, that doesn't resolve the issue. It's not in the that record. That doesn't resolve the issue for Mr. Massetti's personal liability. Absolutely. But, but Your Honor, the Bellotti case How says that all of the evidence is going to be with them. All of the evidence is going to be with them. How could we be sanctioned if they haven't even given us discovery? How could we possibly be sanctioned? Because the motion was filed before discovery would have proven or disproved in your own allegations. We're How almost at the end of discovery. They haven't given us anything. Then file not a motion discovery. But that's so not to be a rewarded for it. It's, it's different issues. You're conflating the issues. <laughs> this was summary judgment. You certified you're entitled to judgment as a matter of law. At that point, what possible discovery would change your entitlement? You could, there's no further. Nothing would change it. We'd be entitled. Exactly. What do you mean? Nothing would be, nothing would change it. If you're entitled to judgment as a matter of law, then your emails and everything at that point should substantiate your motion. You don't need every, further. And it's my discussion. position that they do. Correct. Thank you. Exactly. But you, there's nothing in the record. That's the problem. There's no record. And I can't allow. There's no record because you won't answer it. There's a record from our end. There's no record from your end. Okay. And we, and so you're standing. starting to. Yeah, you're devolving into what happened at the last hearing where you're talking to each other. Um, quite frankly, I need I need discovery to be complete um, before I consider another summary judgment motion. Um, at this stage of the game, um, I'm leaving open the question of uh, an offset of uh, council fees um i haven't decided how much or um i haven't decided how much and um i'm concerned about the issues regarding mr massetti and the i i think mr shagunas let me say this you're you 
you kind of um, undermined your own motion by not allowing discovery to take place. Um, discovery, had it been back in January, if she wasn't writing a motion, um, resolving a summary judgment motion, she may have been dealing with the discovery issues, frankly. Um, it just seems to me that the focus, um, when you refocus an attorney on something and then um, try to um, challenge them um, by saying, well, you haven't given me discovery. Well, she was filing a brief. Um, and I remember it being yeah, an but Your expensive... Honor, I have 50 cases at any time. Your Honor, I have I'm 50 sorry. cases well, can at you, any I, time. You're breaking up, Mr. Uh, can you say, Mr. Shikinis, I, have... I didn't hear what you just said. Go ahead. Your, I was just going to say, I have 50 cases at any given time. The idea that you can't pursue discovery and answer a motion for summary judgment is just, I don't know where that comes from. I mean, that's what we do. We're attorneys. We're If we're litigators, we're handling multiple cases multiple times. You can do multiple things at once. That's why the rule allows for us to, per, to file our motion for summary judgment and pursue discovery. If, we, if our motion for summary gets denied, we're not going to waive our right to discovery. Okay. That, that's why I can understand the court denying our motion for summary judgment if that's how the court feels. I can't understand the sanctions. I just can't understand that. Well, the counsel, I'm leaving the issue open. Yes, ma'am. If if she can satisfy, if she can satisfy the rule, um, and provide specific information. It's something to be considered. Um, Your Honor, I submitted a certification in conjunction with uh, our opposition to the motion for reconsideration. If the court would like me to present a formal application as a follow-up, I can absolutely do that. Um, okay, counsel, I did not review your certification. I will allow... As I indicated, I, I would allow Mr. Shagunas to um, address it. Um, I think, Your Honor, at the last hearing, you said that you, the application she submitted was not an itemized breakdown, and you wanted to see an itemized breakdown so you could see what right. portion she was asking for. Yeah, that's exactly it. I did ask for that, counsel, and I, I said you could comment on it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I said you could comment on it. Um, so I won't resolve, I'll, I'll reconsider my ruling only to the extent that um, the issue of council fees will be addressed at um, the final hearing. Yes, ma'am. So I'll allow that. Um, but I'll consider the arguments of council. Is there anything further? I know you disagree with me, Mr. Shagunas, but <laughs> it's not, I, not I think your colleague is waiting. <laughs> we're way over. We're way over the time, um, and so we're backed up a little bit. Um, so that's my ruling. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Be safe and, and best of luck to your family. Yeah. Same to you. Same to everybody. Thank you.